I think that if it turns out that this cancer is spread and it's through his lungs um, and it's something I can't operate on, then I'll make that call fairly early. While he still has all the quality and the happiness that he has now. Come on. In Bondi, Dr. Kate Adams is trying her best to be cheerful on her morning walk with her beloved golden retriever, Ben. Bit of energy. You could do it. Come on. Ben is a battler. 12 months ago, Kate found a lump on his shoulder that turned out to be an aggressive tumour and he had to undergo two major surgeries. We really had to go in fairly bold and actually take a lot a lot of muscle and it was it was pretty hard to see. Underneath that that sheet was my dog. I thought that if they could just give me a, another 12 months, then I would be a very, very happy lady. And I thought, you know what? I've bought him some time and I've been able to give him hopefully another year. Okay, ready, steady, go. Yeah. Today but... is bittersweet for Kate. While Ben has made a full recovery from the surgery and looks a picture of health, recent blood tests show his liver enzymes are elevated. Having high liver enzymes can be nothing. It could be just that he's old, but the fact that this is a change from his regular blood test rings some alarm bells for me. Come on, old mate. Scared that the cancer has returned, Kate is taking Ben to the Sydney Emergency and Specialist Centre for urgent tests. Hello, Dr. Kate. Hello, how are Lovely you? Lovely to Michael? see you. Nice, to, nice see you. to see you. You too as well. How are you? Kate is meeting with specialist Dr. Michael Linton. Please. Come on, Benjo. Let's go. I don't even think of Benny as a dog. I think of him as a family member. He has been with me since he's been about seven weeks old and we've pretty much been inseparable ever since. He has been with me through the whole adventure, everywhere from Queensland to the Northern Territory to Outback WA, and now he is a Bondi dog. It's really difficult to tell with Ben when he's in pain, and it's really difficult to tell when he is unhappy because of the fact that he never complains. He always says that he's happy, and he does that for me. So, yeah, I feel like I owe him I owe him to try. The, the previous spots before the liver enzymes were normal? Perfectly or? normal. OK. Kate's a, you know, a very diligent owner, of course, but, you know, obviously a vet. And um, so she's been keeping an eye on the enzymes. And, you know, there has been a change. So I think given Ben's history, um, yeah, it is a cause of concern. First today, Ben is going to be given an ultrasound. Uh, the ultrasound allows us to have a look at all of the organs, not just the liver. Good boy, Ben. Good boy. The concern is now that, you know, has the cancer come back or has it spread anywhere? And that's something that, you know, we need to check for. So we're looking in the lymph nodes. Also, given the elevation of the liver enzymes, we're going to have a good look at the liver as well. Alrighty. If this is a return of the cancer, I'd be devastated. There we go. Beautiful. OK, we're good. All righty. Looks very normal on the left kidney so far. I can't see any abnormalities in the bladder. The bladder wall looks nice and thin. Whenever we're treating any of our friends or colleagues with their own pets, it does add a, another layer to it because, you know, you never want to see someone, you know, suffering. But at the same time, we have a job to do, and our job is to to try to work out what's causing Ben's clinical signs. Now we're going to look at his liver, which was obviously a concern of ours. Michael is looking for any obvious lesions or changes in the texture of Ben's liver. The liver's not entirely normal, yeah. but it doesn't ring true of any obvious um, infiltrative disease like cancer. There's no mass on there? No, not that I can see. It's like this horrible game of waiting. And where is it going to come back? And when is it going to come back? Next, Michael is moving on to Ben's adrenal gland. 
So the adrenal gland on the left side, although it's got a normal shape, it's a little bit larger than a normal adrenal gland. So we'll have to look at the adrenal gland on the other side. So we need to actually roll him over. Oh, go, matey. Very good. Push you down. There you go, Chuck. So I'm looking again at his liver. And again, it has a very similar appearance to what we're looking at on the other side. It's possibly a little bit more coarse than usual, but I can't see any obvious lesions or growths. Such a good dog. So, uh, Dr. Kate, we found the other adrenal gland, and this gland is also larger than it would be in a dog with normal adrenal glands. That can be consistent with a condition um, called Cushing's disease. Old dogs often have things wrong with them. All you can really actually hope for is that you find something that is treatable. You're OK. I'm right here. So we found the other adrenal gland, and this gland is also larger than normal adrenal glands. That can be consistent with inflammation, but can also be consistent with a condition um, called Cushing's disease. Cushing's disease is when there's an overproduction of the hormones from the adrenal gland. Probably the biggest one is something called cortisol. Cortisol is probably referred to as the stress hormone, and we need it to live. But when we've got excess amounts, there can actually be some serious complications if that's not managed appropriately. I think that no cancer is yeah. really the best news. Yeah, that's right. Cushing's disease is something that I can manage. It's something that I can treat, and that is a good thing. Cancer is something I can't. Cushing's is often progressive, so it can really affect an old dog's quality of life, meaning that treatment is really essential. But in older dogs, anything that you can treat and they are going to live is a good diagnosis. But Ben can't be given the all clear just yet. Michael now wants to do a CT scan to make absolutely sure there is no sign of Ben's earlier cancer. The CT scan, you know, offers us the most sensitive way to pick up any evidence of return of that tumour in the chest being spread or in the original surgical site. Good luck, Benny. You'll be fine. I'm feeling really nervous about putting him under. Good boy. You've got to watch out for general anaesthetics in older dogs. Kate won't be able to relax until she knows that Ben is cancer-free. Oh, I feel like a bit of an overprotective mum at this point. The best case that I'd be hoping to find with Ben is ideally nothing at all. But unfortunately, cancer can hide away. Um, you know, they're tiny little cells and there is still a chance that it will rear its ugly head again. I think that if it turns out that this cancer is spread and it's through his lungs um, and it's something I can't operate on, then I'll make that call fairly early while he still has all the quality and the happiness that he has now. Good boy. I'm very tired. So, Kate, so far, the preliminary results looks very positive at the moment. But there's no evidence of a growth. There's no evidence of return of the lesion. All looking very, very positive. This is good. This is as good as we could hope for at this point, absolutely. Yeah. There is no reoccurrence of the cancer at this stage, which is excellent news. Thank you so much for looking after him. This has been <laughs> super useful. You know, if Cushing's is the only thing wrong with him, then that is a good thing for me. That's right. It's a manageable situation. It means that then I'm not having to, to deal with cancer. Absolutely. It's a good thing. Hey, mate. Come on, wakey wake. Wakey wake. You can do it. Come on, wake up. Have you been good? Do you want some breakfast? Do you want to go to the park? You don't want to go to the park. No, I'm too tired. I am feeling so relieved. I feel like I can put this unease about the cancer coming back to rest, even if it's just for another six months. Big hug like this. This love affair is not quite over yet. It's been a week since Kate's dog, Ben, was confirmed cancer-free. Good dog, right next to me. Right next. And a very relieved Kate has been spoiling her special boy. There we go. I think every day is a pamper Benny day. Hey, Benny, do you want some dinner? <laughs> you do? <laughs>
I know the type of cancer he had. I know that grade three sarcomas, they don't go away forever. And there's gonna come a day where I have to say goodbye to him. And when that happens, I feel like I gave him a really good run. I gave him the best that I possibly could. Do you want one of these? Which one do you want? Do you want this one? <laughs> okay. Tests have confirmed that Ben does have one major health issue, Cushing's disease, which affects the adrenal gland, but can be managed successfully. Every day is a blessing. Did you finish yours already? I want this one. I feel like a really lucky lady to just even have a little bit more time with him. You're a good dog. You're a good boy, mate. Sarah, can we get two 10 mil syringes of, real, of warm saline, please? Um, he's, just, he's very cold, he's very dehydrated, and he just looks as though he's in a bit of shock as well. At the Bondi Clinic, a heartbreaking emergency has just arrived. This tiny joey was found on the side of a road with no mother in sight. The leg muscle here. That's just going to try and give his system a bit of a kickstart. Uh, it's a cortisone-based drug, so it, I guess, improves the circulation, just gets everything revved up, because right now his system's just crashing. Okay. Yeah, that's nice and warm. Okay, Mummy's milk. If we go too fast, then that milk drips down the back of his throat and he's too weak really to, to close off his larynx, then that milk goes straight into his lungs. And if that happens, then it's going to be fatal. You, you just can't be impatient with it. Leah from Sydney Wildlife rushed the baby Eastern Grey kangaroo into the clinic. He hasn't been fed properly for three days. And normally in the pouch, he'd be continuously getting nutrients, having warmth from his mother. So, I don't, I don't think it's very good. The family who first found the abandoned Joey fed him cow's milk for three days. They thought they were doing the right thing. Cow's milk is really not suited to them at all. It's got lactose. Now, lactose is a sugar that kangaroos just can't digest. Another 12 hours, no chance. But it's just possible we've got him in time. It's going to be really tough, though. I'd say what's happening is that the warm blood's actually just pooling in his body. Yeah. It's not getting right around. Absolutely. So a bit of a massage okay. might actually help. Hey, matey, wake up. Wake up. I mean, it looks silly, but what that's doing is actually compressing the blood that's contained within his organs. OK. And we're trying to circulate that right around. And get a six-pack well. He doesn't seem to mind it. Yeah, he will. But he seems more responsive. He is much more responsive, isn't he? Sitting up now. Do have ridiculously long legs, though. Have you noticed that? <laughs> I think you do. Aww. I'll have to think of a name for him. He came in a beanie, and I think beanie somehow suits him. And also, beanies are very Australian too, and he is as Australian as they come. A little battler, a little Aussie battler. Not that approval. got it. <laughs> yes, now that's the ticket. Mm -hmm. Right on. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Double nods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. More of the good stuff. Sugar rush. <laughs> there are some good signs, but Beanie is still critical. After a feed, Sarah wraps the little Rube back in his Beanie for some much needed sleep. I'm impressed the way he's come through the first six hours, but really the next 24 hours decides whether he has a future. He's basically had to grow up before his time. And it's up to him and it's up to us to see if he can actually survive that. He's got the fight of his life right now. Come on, Beanie. Let's go on. Chris is taking Beanie home so the abandoned Joey can get the constant attention he needs. He's got the seat warmer on. Oh, that's pretty good for Beanie right now. The sick Roo will need a bottle feed every three hours if he has any chance of surviving. I think we might have got off to a very rocky start. Fresh. Feed and change time, come on. What I'm doing right now is actually just covering him in, in lanolin. It serves two purposes. One, it moisturises his skin, but also it provides a bit of insulation to him. Well done. 
doesn't look the best, but still, well done. He just looks like some sort of alien with his long legs. It's been a real struggle, but I've just I've managed to find the perfect drinking position for him. And he seems to prefer being quite upright. If you do squeeze his hand back, he seems to really enjoy that and actually start drinking quite feverishly. And you can see now he's drained that bottle. The man's got a thirst. You can hear these little squeaking sounds. But thankfully, I've got his eyes covered so he can't see the monstrosity that has become his mother. Okay, Beanie. I know from past experience that even though I'm meant to be getting up every three or four hours, it's not like that. Yeah, up on high for you. You don't get up, feed them, go back to bed, then get up again three hours later. You get up, fingers crossed, go and check that they're still alive, feed them, then go back to bed, but then you don't sleep. And it's just that constant nagging doubt and nagging worry the whole way through the night that they're actually not going to make it through the night. <laughs> He's really guzzling it down big time. It's 1am and Chris has woken up to give Beanie the orphan Joey another feed. But this time, when Chris unwraps his little mate, there's no movement, no sound. The hard thing is that when he first came in, he looked for all the world like he wasn't going to make it, and we, we beat that. Last night, for him to be drinking well and, and, and sitting up, and so you're thinking in your, in your back of your mind, hey, this one's going to make it. You know, this, this one will turn it all around, and then, and then you get that shock, and that sucks. It really sucks. Spent the whole rest of the morning just analysing, you know, was he too hot? Was he too cold? Did I give him too much milk, too little milk? Where did I go wrong? No. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris breaks the sad news about Beanie. Oh, sorry. You can't beat yourself up about it. You know, again, hindsight's a fine thing. You, we can only do what we did. We put him on heat, we fed him, we gave him lots of love as well, and that's just as important with these young animals. You can just do the best you can. Look, some you win, some you lose. And we found that a lot with wildlife. If you make it, it's great. If you don't, then, you know, that's when we cry. I'm just on a long drive up to North London to visit the All Dogs Matter charity. They are a fantastic organisation that rescue dogs that are stray here in the capital. And today they've given me a call about an old dog that has a problem list as long as your arm. So I'm just driving up there straight away to see if there's anything that I can do to help. It's a baby, aren't you? Animal rescuer Sonia is waiting with a 14-year-old English bull terrier called Arnie. So we rescued Arnie from the local pound. Arnie's coming in a really bad condition and he really needs Scott to have a good look at him and, and make him better again, make him the handsome boy that he was. Hello, Sonia. Hi, Scott, how are you? Great to see you. And you. This is Arnie. Hello, boy. Come on. Oh, he's an English bull terrier. He is, he is. Oh, my goodness, you are so handsome, aren't you? Boy. You are so handsome. Sonia wouldn't have known this, but I had a rescue English Bull Terrier when I was going through university. His name was Zed. We had a massive bromance. I absolutely adored him. So to see another one here that I can help today, I think it's really special. He's got a nice shiny coat. He's a little nice, bit thin, lovely. isn't he? Mm. A bit a underweight. Bit, a bit underweight, yeah. And, and anything else? He's got problems with his ears and his teeth as well. His teeth, yeah. Are they bad? Can I have a look at this side, honey boy? Oh, oh boy. yeah, they're horrible. Then we've also got his paws. Oh, ouchy, archy, look at that. Yeah. Straight away, Some that dew claws growing, grown there. Growing. And, and then, then oh. he's got this huge lump. Oh, my goodness me. That didn't grow overnight, no. so someone has literally just left that yeah. to I mean, grow. How long would you say that's been there for? Oh, probably a good year, I would say. I mean, it depends on what it is. 
And that's the real worry, is it could be something benign, it could be something mm. horrendously malignant. So we won't know until yeah. we take it off. It really is sad to see a dog come in at that age. For us, it's... It, it's shocking, really. I mean, it's disgusting that people can abandon a dog at any age, but when they really need you and they're in such a bad way, it's... I've, I've got no words, really. Who abandons a dog? I mean, he's given you all that love and attention mm -hmm. and joy, and then at the tail end of his life, when he's got a few issues, mm -hmm. dump him. Just heartless. It's too sad. It's always very upsetting to see any rescue animal and understand why they have just been turfed out of a loving home. Arnie particularly is pulling at my heartstrings. I absolutely love them as a breed. I know what they're like. I know how loving and loyal they are. And his owners have gone, you know what, we've had our best years with him. We're going to turf him out. And it just angers me to the very core. I think I might take him with me, son. OK. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Scott's going to take him back to Richmond. Him and his team are going to do some wonderful work on Arnie. Hi, darling. He has got a lot of things wrong with him at the moment, but if anyone can make him better, paws crossed, Scott can do that. Let's go to Richmond, hey? Let's show off the big, musty boy. Yes, yeah, yeah. Come on, this way. Good boy, come on. Here we go. Come on. Good boy. Can you come? Hi, guys. Hi, Scott. Can I introduce you to a very special boy? He is a rescue dog. Unfortunately, his owners, after having him for 12 years, 13 years, have decided that they're just going to dump him. He's an old boy with quite a few problems. Come on, then. Go with Uncle Nathan. Here he is. There he is. Come on, then. <laughs> All right. I've just put a call through to a really good friend of mine to help with Arnie's care, and she is very much a fellow Bull Terrier lover. Ali, well, she's always wanted to be a veterinary nurse, and I thought this was the perfect opportunity for her to have a spot of work experience with her favourite breed. What do you reckon she's, she's gonna... <laughs> she's gonna go sick for you. She is. She is. Ali, this is Arnie. <laughs> Don't cry, you're going to make me cry. Oh, love, no, darling. When I walked down and saw him, it was, well, it was a shock. It was memories. It was, yeah, mixed emotions, but he's such a sweetheart. Ali's first dog was an English Bull Terrier called Ruck, and it was through him that she first met Scott. Ruck has since passed away, but Scott and Ali have been firm friends ever since. He's beautiful, isn't he? He's gorgeous. It just brings all the memories flooding back. So you start thinking about your dog and all the history with Scott and just how sad I was to lose mine. I just wanted to meet the little fella and see if he was all right. Go and put some scrubs on, my I'm dear. Excited. Scott has another motive for calling Ali in today. <laughs> he's hoping she might even consider adopting the old dog once he's nursed back to good health. What he needs is a mountain of love. This boy has been shortchanged and he needs love urgently. Ali has such empathy and such care for animals and she really wants to make Arnie feel loved, which is possibly the first time in his life he's really felt it. Ta-da! Ah, look. Oh, Looks more ready. nursey already. So Very I'm good. I'm right. I'm ready to look after the fella. Yes. So he has quite the litany of problems and we need to just prioritise as his Veterinary care is what we're going to do, all right? So, okay. to start with, have a look at this. Oh. Absolutely horrific. Oh, my God, it makes me so mad. Also, you can see his toenails are very long. Very sad to know that he's got ingrown <gasps> ones as well. And then last but not least is <gasps> this is the piece that I'm most concerned Cinder. about. Very vascular, very large, very nodular. All things which could suggest that it's something not very nice. And right. if it is nasty, is it likely to be elsewhere? It could well be. Yeah. Mm. I volunteer with dog charities and it never stops making me sad how people can just abandon a dog. It's a, just a catalogue of neglect to me that people haven't taken their role as a dog owner and dog carer and, you know, dog mum seriously. 
All right, but let's sort this immediate issue out. I mean, look at that. It's gone right, right around. Right back into the pad. That must be agony. Yeah. It just shows how amazing dogs are, that he is in constant discomfort and yet can still find love in his heart for us, for even us. though humans even though we are... we do that to him. Exactly. God, they're so they're big tough, and thick. They? Yeah, classic bull terrier nails. Okay. There you go, mate. That's what healthy, normal-looking nails looks like. Much better. No more digging in. So already we've made his life better. Absolutely. The nail clipping was straightforward, but now it's time for the far more complicated removal of the nasty lump on Arnie's bottom. The lump under his tail probably worries me the most because in older dogs, there are some fairly nasty types of cancer that can develop around the anus. Some of them, like carcinomas, for example, are incredibly malignant and if present, will be fatal very quickly. If you can pull his legs a little bit further back, I really want to see that sort of come right up to me. That's it, great. Arnie's surgery is about to begin, and already Scott is worried about the elderly dog. He is breathing a little bit roughly, so we are concerned about the anaesthetic, and we need to just make sure we keep a very close eye on him. All right, I'm cutting now. Are you ready to go? So what I'm going to have to do is cut through the skin. Once I start cutting into it, I can see it is just bleeding everywhere. But thankfully for Ali, she was tough enough and she didn't faint. Dog OK now? Yeah, it's fine. Here we go. This is going to come off now, likely. All right. There we go. There we have it. Nasty looking thing. And unfortunately, it's so big and so thickened that I wouldn't be able to say that we've got good margins so that we have 100% cure. But we need to send this up to the lab and the pathologist will tell us what kind of cells make this up and are they bad ones or is it just an abnormal growth of an, an old boy? Let's hope and it's the latter. And if it's a bad one, what you're saying is you might not have got it all. That's right, and I can't take any more away because I'll then affect the ability for his bum to work he'll be incontinent, which is yet another reason why he won't get a home, so. I meet lots of rescue dogs. I've met rescue bull terriers, not many, but I haven't been involved in surgery. And, and he's so neglected, he's such a mess. Who's gonna take him? Come on. He's been a right soldier, hasn't he? Yes, love him. The next few days here at the practice is gonna be an agonizing wait because we need to wait for the pathologist's report on Arnie's lump. There you go. Hopefully, if that comes back OK and it's not a nasty type of cancer, then we still have to put the poor old boy through yet another anaesthetic to sort out his horrendous teeth. And then we've got to find him a new home. So there's lots of question marks still to come in Arnie's future. No, no, it's just me. It's just me. I know. I'd like to think that Ali's thinking about taking Arnie. Darling, I know. He is definitely twanging her heartstrings, and I think that he'll be a very lucky boy if he gets to go home with Ali. He's OK. I think this is like his favourite thing, isn't it? I know, just Let's get paddles. paddles. A day after surgery to remove a massive lump from his bottom, Elderly rescue dog Arnie is recovering well. It's a hard life, isn't it? <laughs> and nurse Reagan and receptionist Kirsty are making sure he's getting lots of love. Having Arnie here has been amazing. We've all fallen in love with him. Any kind of bull breed, I absolutely love them. And he's, um, yeah, he's just been quite a good addition to the practice. The old dog's next round of surgery on his badly neglected teeth will be in a few days. Scott and his team are hopeful he will then be well enough to go to a new home. <laughs> oh, good boy. It's time for Arnie's second surgery, this time to fix his badly neglected teeth. Oh, look, he's there. Hello. Hello. Who is it? Who's that? Hi again. Scott's invited Ali back to assist with today's surgery. He's definitely happier. The wound at the back of his tail here, uh, where we've removed the lump, um, is healing very nicely oh. indeed. So nice assisting the other day. And even better news is the results have come back. And although it looked like an incredibly nasty tumour, it had 
the suggestion that it was going to become something nasty, but actually it's benign. So. No way. Yes. Oh me! Just a nasty, horrible lump. Yeah. Oh. More unsightly than. Yeah. Dreadful. Yeah. That's the best news. Yeah. A little bit of sunshine in our boy's life. But Arnie's good news is tinged with sadness after Scott found out the poor old dog is deaf. Stone deaf. Stone deaf. Yeah, he can't hear a <laughs> yes. thing. <laughs> Nothing. Scott and his team are now more determined than ever to give the brave Bull Terrier a better life. So now it's time to start his much-needed dental surgery. Let's get you downstairs, my boy. And let's sort those teeth out. Although I'd love to give Arnie a Hollywood smile, this isn't a choice. I have to do this dental. His teeth are horrendous. There's a huge amount of bacteria and infection built up along his gum line, which will be having a major effect on not only his quality of life, but also the health of his liver and his kidneys. Hold your dental chart there, please, Do nurse. I not need any gloves? Uh, well, we might get you pop on some gloves in a second. OK. Shall I fill his name in? Yes, go for it. As Ali's here and she's a hard worker, I'm going to put her to work. So not only will she be my dental nurse for the day and help me to understand which teeth are going to stay and which teeth are going to go, but also she'll do a little spot of scaling and polishing. This is years' worth of tartar that we're going to get rid of in an afternoon, which is, it is quite satisfying, yeah. God, <laughs> it can be quite rough. Yeah. Doing a dental on a dog like Arnie is pretty dirty business. It's very grubby, it's quite bloody, and at times it's really quite rough as well. We have to put quite a bit of force in to remove some of the teeth that are loose and then scale all the nasty tartar that's been building up over a number of years. So 401 is loose, so that's going to come away. Eight of Arnie's teeth are badly infected and will have to be removed. So when they come out that easily, they're meant to come out. His gums are also in shocking condition. Do you want the goggles? And a thorough clean is needed to remove years of built-up tartar and plaque that's contributing to his gum disease. It really must have been such a painful time. Every time he opened his mouth to chew, it must have been an exercise in discomfort. But now all that tartar's removed, just like when you go to a dental hygienist yourself, your teeth feel shiny and fresh. And that's exactly how hopefully Arnie will be feeling. Oh boy. Well, that's the last thing you need to do. Hopefully you can have a lovely retirement now. Ready for a loving home. Do you know anyone? I'm trying to be very subtle when it comes to Ali and maybe considering that she should take Arnie home with her. Uh, I'm not normally classed as subtle. My wife would say I'm like a brick through a window. <laughs> but Scott's not-so-gentle persuasion seems to be working. He's a lovely boy. He is, and when he's up, he's such a joy. Mm. Tail going. It's a classic love sponge. Hey. <laughs> Hey. We could share him. Maybe we dog share. Yeah. Gosh. You have to sell Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Good boy. That's it. What a good old gent. OK, now remember, best behaviour. Hey, mind your P's and Q's. Walking down the hill with Arnie, immediately I get a little bit nervous. There's real trepidation because this is a make or break moment. Arnie has the chance of a new life with someone absolutely amazing. So I just hope this works, but I am very, very nervous. Uncle Scott's on his way with a surprise. Scott is hoping his good friend Ali will give Arnie a new home. But it all hinges on how well Ali's dog Mabel gets on with the old bull terrier. I can see your potential new family over here. Come on. My biggest priority is Mabel. I hope the meet and greet goes really well, but I need to be sure that I'm doing the right thing for her before I can do the right thing for him. Hey, Al. Hey there. <gasps> Who's, that? Who's this handsome guy? Look at him. Who's this handsome guy? Jenny. Say hi. Oh, look at him. There you go. Ah. Oh, <laughs> they're going to do a dance. They're going to do the lead dance. Arnie and Mabel lock eyes and love at first sight. Oh, look. I think <laughs> that's the first time I've seen him do that. Oh. Yeah. Are you kidding? No. Oh, look. Mabel and Arnie seem to get along 
brilliantly. Look at that! Look at that! Oh! Immediately, Arnie starts to play bow, which is a exhibition of happiness where they want to engage another dog in play behaviour. That's so, so positive. They start walking around and smelling each other, which is very normal for dogs. And then they get to a point where they're so comfortable in each other's company that they pretty much ignore each other. That is an ideal result. That's brilliant, isn't it? Very calm, very relaxed. Yeah, yeah I'm really happy with that. Very happy, waggy tails. Look. We really couldn't ask for anything better. No. The look in Ali's face shows how calm and how happy she is about the situation. Looking good. He needs a good home. He hasn't had one, has he? And I think I can give him a pretty good home. Yeah. It feels kind of right. So happy. So I happy. <laughs> so nice. It might not be for a long time, but it'll be for a good time. You'll be fed well and loved, sweets. Yeah. You and will be there, and you've got a personal physician. That's it. <laughs> The meet and greet went brilliantly. So, yeah, I'm really, really happy. I think he's found a home with me. You're right there, Mabel. Hey? You're right there. <laughs> hey? You're missing out, darling. Did you just You're right. <laughs> You're right there. As Arnie's an old boy, he still needs a little bit more treatment before he's fully ready to go to his new forever home. So he's going to come back to the practice with me, but very soon I get to help this boy as he ventures forth into this wonderful retirement. Happy families. I hope so. I will miss you. It's so lovely. It's a milestone day for elderly dog Arnie. The 14-year-old rescue dog has undergone weeks of surgeries, medication and TLC. And today he's finally well enough to head off to his new home. Hey guys, I was wondering where he was. We just he's kidnapped him. He's enjoying his favourite pastime he of being is. adored. Yeah, hey. just making the most of it. It's the last few minutes here. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, it's very sad for us to say goodbye to Arnie because we've all absolutely fallen in love with him, particularly some of the support staff, Kirsty and Reagan. They adore him. They've actually taken him on weekends to their own homes and given him all the love and the care and attention that we all pride ourselves on. So it is very sad that they have to say goodbye to him, but for Arnie, it's a great day because he gets to go to a loving new home. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Arnie. Come on, mate. Let's go to your new home. Come on, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. That's it. Come on. There you go. Let's go. Let's go. Sad. <laughs> I'm going to do now. <laughs> I know. Come on, then. Hey, chauffeur driven to your new home. Come on. Arnie's been with us for a long time now. For him to go to his new home, obviously, is a really important step in his future. But for us, we're left with a big hole. He has been such a wonderful personality to have in the building, and we're going to miss him very much. Back, mate, let's go. Boys on tour. Yeah? Big brother's coming today. Yes, he is. At Arnie's new home in Surrey, an excited Ali is waiting with her other rescue dog, Mabel. Mabel doesn't have a clue what's coming. But I think when he arrives, she'll think he's going to stay for a bit and then leave. It's just the bond between the two dogs. You're never really sure until, you know, you're in the home environment. There's a tiny little bit of anxiety there. The rest of it is just excitement. OK. Come on, then, handsome. We're here. There we go. Good boy. Come on, then. Come on, then. Come on, this is your new home. Hello, mates. Hello, mate. Hello, look. Hello, your new fella. Friend. Look. I oh, know you can't hear me, but hello, fella. Hello, oh, hello. Good to see you. Here's your new boy. Hello, fella. God, Scott, he's looking so well. I know. You've put on a few, well, I don't know how many kilos. He's put on four kilograms. Four. He's put on a kilogram a week. So he's just doing so well. And now, you get to enjoy the high life with Ali. Welcome home, treasure. Hey. It's an incredible full journey that we've had with Arnie. He's gone from rescue, we've rehabilitated him, had two major operations. And now, he's going to be released back into the wilds of beautiful Surrey with Ali. He's going to have such a wonderful twilight of his life. And the fact that I've been able to play a part in that is really special for me. Go on, old man. Go on, you can do it. So he's home. He's home here with us, with Mabel. He seems pretty relaxed. Mabel seems pretty relaxed. That's it. What a perfect day one. So nice to see him in a garden alley. 
Oh, love him. I know. He's so lovable. He's so lovable. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Busek. If you love our show and want to see more amazing stories from the Bondi Vet team, just hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you for our next video.